So everyone, without further ado, we all know why we're here. We're giving Pablo a round two because for those who missed out yesterday, we had some issues, but you know what? We're not going to talk about it. We're going to move forward. So of course, Pablo Gonzalez from Be The St he's the co-founder of Be The Stage. Pablo is also the inventor of the relationship flywheel, host of the B2B community builder, and he's obsessed with human connection. All right, Pablo, without further ado, let's begin. You missed the punchline in my intro, which is more than anything, I'm dying to be your friend, right? And that is real talk. I feel like I'm in my tribe of people, so I feel very, very comfortable sharing that thing. Thank you for showing up to this presentation. Like Anne-Marie said, this is round two. Let me know. Are you seeing? Are you seeing the? Um, are you seeing the screen? Super. Uh, I showed up yesterday. Super, super excited. Biggest opportunity on a stage for the thing that I care the most about, and uh, my internet crapped out. And Emery was super, super nice. Reached out to me, pulled me out of the depths of hell, and gave me a shot. I'm like Rocky II coming into the ring right now. So let's go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share and not share because I saw Chris I saw Chris Walker doing this and I think it's really really compelling, right? So um, I would love to know how familiar you are with go to market, right? Because when I think when I think about go to market, well, I, I set off on this prove that community creation is the future of business development. I've been on this kick nonstop uh, for about seven years with clarity on that language for about three three and a half years and. While I knew stuff that worked for me, I intuitively, and this is a community, a bunch of community professionals, right? I don't normally get to talk to a bunch of people that already buy into this. And maybe you can relate to this. When I'm telling people about the importance of community uh, and how it fits into go to market and just for everybody to kind of like get on the same page, just in case go to market is that wonderful mix that companies really, really care about. That is the combination of what their product is what their marketing is, what their sales are, and what customer success is. And put in the chat how community helps this stuff. I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit, right? Because I literally just parachuted into this wonderful world of community. Low-hanging fruit for me is for product, roadmap opportunities, a plenty, right? Like that magical gem. The social proof and validation for marketers. As a marketer myself, I would kill for social proof and validation anytime it comes in. And community to me is the best way to do that. As a salesperson, referrals, right? That is what you dream of, just having referrals coming in. And for customer success, I think we get this, right? We get this idea that qualitative feedback, that the feedback that you can get that isn't in a uh, stupid uh, survey, it's not in a, yeah, Daniela, I'm repeating the presentation. Thank you, thank you, I'm so happy you're here. Um, that isn't in a survey that nobody wants to fill in, that isn't in an email that that you didn't really want to open and you're kind of doing right, it's that soft that soft stuff that tells you the real magic of how to help people. And, and community provides all of that stuff. And you all know this, right? It's some mix, I learned this actually really from Jenny Weigel, who's just on my podcast, uh, who's in the audience here, who's my old college buddy. It's some mixture of really listening for feedback, providing a place for people to interact and content in order to like magnify that stuff. And that's why events are so popular. That's why, that's why it's so natural for everybody. But when you're selling community to a business owner, to a CEO, to an executive, they, they, they like it, right? Like you're talking to them. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a community. But what I really want right now is some sales. What I really want right now is some marketing content. What I really want right now is this like tangible stuff that they get incentivized to get. So I set off to create a way to inception community, right? How, how to build a process that leads to community while giving that decision maker what they want. And it, you know, it started off as this like event strategy and as it evolved for me, and especially during COVID times, it started making a lot of sense. I came up with this, the talk show, right? The internet talk show. If you think about the, you know, we all agree there's gotta be some content involved and we think about the content generator, the great content generators of our time, the networks, the radio stations, the TV stations, think about how much of that mix is a talk show format and how long that stands the test of time. The talk show has these like very human elements of storytelling and interaction, but it also has this, which is some key language that marketers love to use and business leaders love to use. On the stage, you're able to build a relationship one-to-one. -one. That's what Oprah, my girl right here, is doing with whoever's lucky enough to be that guest. 
in the audience, you're able to create a relationship one to few with a captive audience that can provide that feedback and interaction and that magical thing. And then when you go down to the television, right in the middle of that screen, you're able to provide uh, relationships one to many, right? That becomes the asynchronous stuff that goes out. And people that had the distribution have been doing this forever. And the good news is you now have the distribution, right? The internet is down that, that distribution. Social media channels are now that distribution. And if you utilize a, a talk show format correctly, you can turn it into what I have trademarked because I think I'm smart, a uh, relationship flywheel, right? And in order to make it a relationship flywheel, we're going to talk about, think of this community creation and, and that middle of the, the middle of the area, right? That's the talk show, right? That's that interaction that's always happening one-to-one, one, one to few one-to-many. And then there's three pillars that make this thing spin. One is value. If you can co-create value with the members of your community on that stage and in the audience, it's going to drive people closer to the center of it, right? If you, the third, the second pillar, it's value, connections, and content. Figured I got to frame that, right? The second pillar is connection. And if you can nurture connections in a specific way, again, it's going to bring people from that broadcast out one to many to the one to few to the one to one. And that's going to create people merging closer to the center of that stage where that gravitational force of your community can be birthed on the way, you know, to like satisfying actual like business KPIs and blah, 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 that people care about. And then finally content, right? Content is the kerosene on all of it, right? That is the magnification of the power of the relationship building of all the stuff that's happening in the stage. And if you're following those three rules, adequately, then the content that you create really sets up that like wide spreading kind of hooks and breadcrumbs that lead you down the magical path, right? That yellow brick road into the center of the community. So let's go. The value has got to be obvious. When I'm talking to people about starting a show, the number one thing that they got to understand is that your product, your solution, your service, the thing that you want to do for people is just one part of the equation for the person that you're trying to serve, for the person that you're trying to sell, whatever you want to call it, right? The person that you're trying to help with the problem that you think that they have that you think you can solve. So the number one thing that you need to do is accept that and then understand and then take inventory of what are the ancillary things of value that they need to achieve that desired state that you want to give them that's going to help them on this journey. What are the other, what are the other tools that they need in information wise, right? And once you understand what that is, then you take inventory. You know, I call those the content pillars, right? Like you understand the content pillars of what is going to help your ideal client, the person you're trying to serve, the person in your community, right? And once you figure that out, you take inventory of everybody you know and who can give them those tools via content and via a relationship, right? So you set those content pillars. The case study that I'm going to use at the end of this thing is called the Not Your Average Investor Show. It's a turnkey rental, inf it's a turnkey rental investing company that uh, sells uh, rental homes, like you buy a bond, right? Like just one stop shop, completely vertically integrated, where you buy a house and they manage it and they build it and they do everything and you get a rate of return and you never have to see it, right? So, like for them, content pillars were in was real estate education, asset class education, Jacksonville, because it's all in Jacksonville, right? You don't want to buy a house in Harry Knuckle, Florida. It's got to be a special macro economy. People in the company and who else is doing this, right? Those are those are the content pillars. And then once you understand those content pillars, you create a schedule of what's going to come on that talk show stage. And then you got to think about positioning. Then you got to think about the name of the show. The ideal name of a show, uh, the ideal name of the positioning is not what the product is. It's not necessarily the problem you solve. It's something somewhere in between who that person you're trying to solve is, what you are solving for, and where is it in between that you can meet halfway on the way to win, right? So for these folks, they wanted to call it the Rental Property Investing Show. Duh, that's the obvious thing that everybody wants to do. No, we settled on the Not Your Average Investor Show, right? Because somebody that's going to buy this asset class has looked around at their 401k and said, this isn't for me, right? I'm not average. I need something better. And that allowed us to, number one, widen the tent to attract more people, but also attract guests that normally would not identify with something as specific as rental property investing, attract people like cryptocurrency investors that, you know, like provide value to what they're doing in the decision making. The mayor of Jacksonville who, you know, would say like, well, you're not, you're an average investor. You're investing yourself into a community, right? So like you can really position it that way. So you want to open up the tent and the positioning in a way that gets people meets people halfway to what you're doing so that they subscribe to it, right? 
to get them to show up to the show, you got to use hook points, right? It's not going to help if I say, hey, check out my podcast with Jenny Weigel, right? Like if you know Jenny, you know she's brilliant. You're going to check it out, right? But if I say, check out my podcast with somebody that's been working in communities for over 10 years, such as Salesforce and Kronos and all this stuff, boom, that's a, that's a tip. That's right, David Spinks, I'm back, man. I told you I was going to bring some energy, man. So so that's going to that's going to bring you in. Those hook points are really, really crucial. And not to when you go to invite somebody to this stuff, think about what is the extra, extra read all about it headline that's going to get them to open up the email to open it. It's normally not a name. It's normally not a brand. It's usually what are you talking about on the show that's going to bring value to me, right? So that is crucial to making the value obvious. And the final thing is use a platform. We use Zoom because it's an easy way to get it. There's better platforms out there. This is like the starter one, CMS wonderful bevy wonderful platform right but using a platform that isn't just going live across all social media creates that like yellow brick road to the center of the community right like somebody that's right now in this chat cat jarvis putting out putting putting out fire feels way more intimate than if she was just commenting on a on a on a linkedin live you know not feeling like she was in here also chatting and commenting on david also chatting on commenting on rex june what you know, what they're putting in, Daniela's putting in, right? So like you want to create these different levels of engagement. So having a platform that gets you, the chat is where it's at. You said it, David. The Getting a platform that gets you to feel that you're a part of something and makes you part owner of the stage is absolutely crucial, right? So now let's move on to connections, right? There's four levels of connections that you're driving while you're doing this internet talk show so that you are really, dry, you know, spinning this flywheel. The one is obvious, host to guest right? That person that you're bringing on, you're having a great conversation with them. What, what are you, what are you up to? What do you care about? What's your superpower? Who can I introduce you to? Right? I, I say con, co-content creation is the new golf, right? It's a great relationship building tool one-to-one. The second one is host to audience. This, you know, might still be obvious to you, but I am very actively engaging with the chat right now because I want you to feel like you just got an 25 minutes of my time, right? So I want you to feel that I'm speaking to you. I don't address the chat as you guys or y'all or whatever, because I know you're sitting there by yourself, right? So I'm talking to you and I want you to engage with me and feel like, feel like I'm paying attention to you. That's right, Eric. Yes. That's so, so people want to be seen at the end of the day. So driving that connection to the audience is key. Um, it starts with just speaking like I'm speaking and it goes all the way to like zany AM DJ stuff, right? On like a lot of these calls, a lot of these shows, I give people nicknames so that when they're coming back, we repeat them and you, you give them a, like a, like a piece of ownership. People want to be seen, right? Third host to audience. Don't forget, uh, sorry, guest to audience, right? Don't forget that if you're hosting somebody on the show that you should not just be parading them around other people and parading people in front of them. Every time that you're going to interact from the guest to the audience, make it like a warm introduction, right? Like, don't just take, hey, what are the top three ways to, to build community, David? Uh, you say, oh man, Jenny, who's in the chat, who's a 10 year professional, you know, she's, we met in college and now she's teaching me this stuff. She wants to know this. If you're, if you're phrasing it as a warm introduction every single time, then the host, or, so then the audience gets way more value. They hear their name on the stage, they're feeling recognized and the guest, gets more context so they can make a better answer, right? Like the more context I give you, the better answer, the more helpful you're going to be, the better it works. And then finally, it's audience to audience, right? Like I'm, I'm deliberately trying to get people to connect with Lydia in here. I'm deliberately trying to get people to connect with Jenny, with David, because I want, I want people to interact in the, in the, in the audience because people, you know, you got to make the value obvious of why you want to show up, right? You want to share the stage with as many people as possible. And if you're doing that correctly, you get into the content part, right? And content is scale. Number one, that stage is the cool club right? Like there's nothing, I'm from Miami. I grew up in like the 90s South beach. Like, you're not going to tell me there's anything more powerful for social kind of like, you know, go to real social. Like I want it than a velvet rope. It just happens, right? I've evolved past that obviously, but the more that you make people feel like they own a little piece of the stage, the closer and closer they get into the cool club, right? So you create these different levels of engagement that reward you more and more, right? Um, then Q and A, Q and A content is gold, right? Like Chris Walker does this phenomenally. Did you watch that presentation, by the way? What's up, Jenny? Um, uh, did 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 you watch that presentation by Chris Walker? Right, like very good at taking Q and A. Q and A allows you to recontextualize as much as possible, right? So uh, messaging is all about context. If I can, if I can get you 
to ask a question in a certain way that I have the same answer to, but I've never been asked it that way and I can contextualize it. Man, when you make that into content, it goes. Gary V does this really, really well. He does keynotes and then does all Q&A. Why? Because if I, you know, he answers the same four things all the time. And, and David, I know that you have your thoughts on Gary V and community creation. I love the dude. Let me know in the chat if you hate him or love him. I'm in, right? Um, I get it both ways. Uh, Gary takes all these people asking him, a million questions and has four answers to it. Make more content, be more self-aware, have some patience, work a little bit harder, right? But what happens is that when you're watching that content, if someone looks like you, you're more likely to believe the answer. If someone asks it the way that you would have asked it, you're more likely to believe the answer. If somebody comes from your same city or has your same background or has your same job title, you're more likely to believe the answer, right? So crowdsourcing Q&A is huge for content to get, gets people to buy in. Thumb stopper, right? Like when you are creating the social media content, you got to understand that people scroll the length of the Eiffel Tower every single day on their phone and they're not going to get to second 43 of your little video if you don't get them to stop the scroll, right? You got to make thumb, you got to make a thumb stopping experience with everything that you make. And there is, <laughs> I got you, man. I got you, David. Um, uh, and, and, and there is three hooks that you can land with, with this like micro content. It's got to come in like a hook story offer format to get them to stop. There's three hooks. The first three seconds of the video, you don't start the video with, eh, when I was 15, I did this. You start the video with, that's when I made my first million bucks, boom, brand. And then the story starts, right? So that creates a pattern interrupt. Oh my God, I made a million bucks, man. The headline that you put in is the other hook that you can land, right? So you want a headline that also catches the attention and plays with the first three seconds. So headline for, I just made my first million bucks. It's like, can't believe he got rich so quick, right? So those things work in common. And then the third hook is the first line of your uh, caption, which to write the first line of a caption, I always think to myself, I never thought I would believe this, but, and that's where I started, right? So like in this one, I never thought I would believe it, but you can make money in crypto in ways you wouldn't believe, right? Like, or, or like people are getting rich on the internet, right? So, and then there's the story, the rest of it, but those three things working in concert make you stop. In order to do this, you got to create a process for speed. The biggest way that you, you can do it is you segment out the five things that need to happen in repurposing. The first thing is you get, you make the video, right? Once you get the video, get it transcribed. That way you're not going back and forth on a video in a way that is, um, is it second three? Is it second six? When did I bring this up? You can control F a document and find out the main area. Once that's there, you highlight the main area that you want edited and you send it to a video editor. That's when the talented video editor does her thing. They cut it up, right? They make it. And then you need a batch board. You need a place where you have the link to the video and places to write titles and captions and whatnot, right? So like it's, so I'll take, and then you need a person that distributes it. When I was first doing this, my first hire, video editor, graphic designer. So I was doing everything, and then I had somebody just doing the editing part. Then I got a copywriter. So I was doing the first half, then video editor, copywriter, and then distribute. And then I got a distributor. Now I have everybody doing everything else, and I'm just creating content, and I'm able to repurpose all these like long form conversations really, really quickly. Quick tip: Descript does a lot of this stuff all in one process. It's the best thing possible, but you got to think about it in transcription. Um, editing, captions, distribution, right? Like break it up. And then finally, you know, YouTube is the new search engine for everybody, for the world, right? So like invest in YouTube SEO strategy. And here is the proof, right? Like I, I, I get a lot of people saying, what's the difference between this and a podcast, right? Like it's not the same thing to do a relationship flywheel, um, internet, internet show versus uh, just a regular podcast. And I've got the perfect case study. I ran two podcasts in 2020, right? Same host, same amount of episodes, similar amount of downloads, very similar features, right? Um, and here are the results, right? One of them was just a podcast and one of them was a relationship flywheel internet talk show. Um, this isn't too bad, right? I collected 61 emails. I got two clients out of it. I made 65 grand in revenue from a podcast. Most people would kill to have their podcast pay for itself. I'm super happy with it until you compare it to what we did with the Not Your Average Investor Show. 1,621 emails, 2,800 people in a Facebook group that's now above 3,000, 259 clients, and a measly $46 million in revenue. So that's the top end part of it. Um, and tons more positive externalities, right? Our strategic narrative changed to understanding that this wasn't about real estate investing. This is about, you know, getting people that didn't have time to think about real estate to invest in real estate, W2 investors, web design. At first was an old guy with gray hair on a boat with an old lady. All of a sudden we started having the show. People look like us, right? Like showing up and we had to redesign the webpage because this isn't, we're not talking to like prudential investments out here. We're talking to 
people that are like VP in their company or like director, or whatever, you got a little bit of money and you're good, right? Um, what else? Oh, the product. They, they introduced a flex investment product because they realized that you could build something for people with less customer success story, man, I'll tell you what, when COVID hit and everybody was really, really worried about their, about their investment, instead of flooding the phones of the, of the sales guys or the sales ladies, um, they just showed up to the press conference, man. It became a real easy, like therapy session for everybody else. Uh, partnerships, tons of podcasters, referrals, stuff like that. This is the beauty of it, right? Like this just started happening. We're based in Jacksonville. This is a group of people in Monterey, California, getting together because they've been fans of the show. They were part of the Facebook group. This guy with a face mask over here, not even a client, but guess what he's about to become, right? Because people get together, it happens. This happened last week. The dude in the left drove five hours from Atlanta to come hang out with us in Jacksonville because Jen and Renee were visiting, right? And then we had a uh, um, a networker, right? So it was, it's amazing, right? Like it leads to real relationships. If you run this content model of internet talk show, um, seamlessly and look at these KPIs, right? Prospect engagements because of what we're doing went up 28, 28 X year over year deal signed went up 2.9, same exact thing. This is really interesting. This leads versus sales. This is called flipping the funnel, right? Because at first they had this many leads that had this many properties. Then they had this many leads that were buying multiple properties at once because we educated the market in an investment class as opposed to a real estate thing. And if you want to see this for real, right? So this is what my company does. We produce this stuff. I think you can do it yourself. It's the number one thing. This is the trick, right? If you want to experience it, you can come to the Not Your Average Investor Show that happens on 12 30 at 12 30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and see it already really well developed and see all like the raving fans in the house and how it feels. And also, obviously I rebranded my podcast. Obviously now I'm doing the actual thing. I've got a I've got an internet talk show for my podcast coming up on Monday at 9.13. It's, um, it's about storytelling. And uh, we're going to run the same thing. I'm getting like, you know, 20 to 40 people showing up. It's a really, really nice thing. And I will, if there's any Q&A now, right? Like I just kind of ran through this. I would love to contextualize this for anybody's, uh, any, anybody's actual situation, answer any questions. Um, I don't know if you're going to come back on, Anne-Marie, but... Uh, man, I just really, really want to thank Anne Marie for giving me this stage. I really want to thank David Spinks for for what y'all have done. Do we have any questions, Anne Marie, or can I just keep going on a soapbox about why all this stuff is so important? Um, we're, we're applauding you first. That was a great round too. Thank you. Applause. Okay, let me pause this. No, we do have one question. Let's let's get that out of the way, and then we can thank everyone for joining. Yeah. Please. Yeah, for okay. sure. So this question's from Amanda. Can mm -hmm. you please restate? how to name an event to attract your ideal community member. Yeah. Um, the intersection between who your client is, who you are and where you're headed, right? Something, something has to happen in their brain to qualify into what they're in, into how they see themselves. That's going to then make them look for your product or, 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 lo or look for your event or whatever. Right. So um, again, in, not your avid investor. We have an ed tech platform that's teaching people how to teach online. Instead of calling ed tech podcast, we're calling it lifelong educators. If you want to teach for the rest of your life, you got to buy into ed tech, right? Like we have another one that is, um, that's a telecom company that sells communications. It's called built to win. If you want to build a company to win, you know, you're going to, you're going to self identify with this kind of stuff, right? So it's like that intermediary point between the decision that they need to make with you and who they are right now. Uh, Veronique has a, has a question here. Do you, do you do this from scratch or you need a brand first? It works, man. Like, like I, I don't, I don't really have a big brand, but if you are, if you are out there making this stuff obvious, right? Like if you got, if you have an email list works right off the bat, I don't have an email list. What I do is I find somebody that I think is compelling that I'm going to have a conversation with, right? Like my show that I got coming up with Park Howell, who's the master of the ABT framework. That's a really easy storytelling mechanism to add into everything you did. By the way, I started this presentation with an ABT. So if it hooked you, then it works. Um, then, and so, so I promote it as learn storytelling in three words, right? And I'm promoting it all over social media. And, and then everybody that opts in opts into like the zoom account where the description is also described in a way of what you're going to gain value from. So you can do it without a, you can do it without a brand. You can do it with a brand. Obviously it works quicker. If you have a brand, if you don't have a brand, but it'll build you a brand real quick. You want to get the last question? Let's yeah, go. Last question. Lydia, this is for you. Your return, your return attendee. 
We got Lydia, this. My, my, my okay. peak community sister. All right. So here's the question. Can Pablo share more about determining the metrics to measure impact? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Great marketer question, Lydia. I'm very responsible of you. Um, the stuff that you feel, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you listen to Chris Walker, right? A lot of this stuff is qualitative, but there is ways that you feel it early. You feel it in the first one to two quarters, you start feeling it as the people that you've had on the show and the people that are friends with the people on the show and existing clients reactivating, right? Like that's the first layer of deals. We, by the way, Lydia, we measure it off of revenue, right? We measure it off of like, has this touched you and did this lead to revenue? Um, so there's a couple different ways. Number one is people that have been on the show, people that have shown up to the show and whether that was their first point attribution engagement with the company or not, or, or, or whatever, what you're going to start seeing is that if you have a sales process, you're going to start seeing that. So JWB has a three call sales process. We started seeing the incidence of engaging with the show and with the content as it goes down into the, into down and down into the calls, the incidence goes up. Right. So at the very least, you're able to attribute influenced generated. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is causal as well. Right. Like they had customers that they had sold a property to 10 years ago, come on the show. Boom. All of a sudden they're buying one to two more properties. Right. They had, you know, customers, parents that had done that, that came on the show and all of a sudden their parents are reinvesting in. Right. So like the 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 one person of delineation from being on the show is the first data point. And then at some point around like Q3 to Q4, you start seeing an overall increase in um, in in uh, in price point per, you know, like per transaction. Right. Like you start seeing more deals happening because people that show up to get on a call with your salesperson are bought in. So they're not buying your starter product right off the bat because they're fully cooked before they ever talk to you, right? So uh, price cost per ticket, right? Like per transaction goes up. Like we said here, um, yeah, LTV, LTV increases too. You're going to start being able to measure retroactively LTV year two. We're starting to measure that stuff as well. But really pipeline velocity increases, uh, price per transaction increases, all that stuff should be directly attributable to having engaged with the content at some point, which you capture on, you know, you're going to get increased inbound, right? Which, you know, like you measure by capturing that through, you know, if your salesperson's talking to them, hey man, have you heard of the show? Have you been a part of this? Or on like the collection form on the website asking if you have been a part of it, you're going to start seeing that incidence rise and you're going to start seeing that the people that had one call and dropped off, did not interact with it. The people that have one call and continued, those people interacted with it. And the people that got more and more cooked that went all the way through, all of them interacted with it. All right, everyone. How did, how did Pablo do on round two? Rocky! Nailed oh, it! Let me see. The, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got I to gotta share my screen real quick. Let's share it one more time, Pablo. <laughs> one Before more screen. Out, yeah. We got one minute left. All right. Uh, is, 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 is we did it? No, we did it. we're here. No, <laughs> we still need to see your screen. That's oh, I'm the worst. No, All right, hold wait, on. We got it. We got it. Yeah, we still got a couple seconds left. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Adrian, Adrian. Yeah! <laughs> Mick. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing up to this. It means the world to me, right? Like, um, you know, this is. This is my life's passion. You see it in my energy. And it comes from a really, really intimate moment that I experienced uh, that taught me that, uh, you know, when my when my brother passed about seven years ago, I looked around and I saw 1,200 people show up to his funeral. And it just really hit me that community was what got us through these last two years. And community is what's lifting us right now. And if something can be so valuable to you in a time of such need, there's nothing more valuable. and you know, relationships are built off value, business is built off value. To provide the most value possible, you need to drive community. So find a way, if you don't have the budget to only drive community, find a way to build it into the process of what you're doing. And that starts with seeing people for what they're worth and displaying their value on your stage at whatever level you can do it to introduce them to people. Well said, Pablo. We're so thankful to have you in our community. He's a new member, y'all. Three months in. We got this. This could be you, too. This could be um, you. 
I know. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Continue to check out what Summit has to offer in its um, final hours. Cannot believe we're here. Pablo, thank you so much once again for joining us this year. And we will see everyone soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Eric. You can cut me off whenever. Thank you, Veronique. Thank you, Siva. Uh, oh, thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Patrice. Patricia. Thank you, Eric. I'm going to keep going if you don't turn me off. I mean, okay, uh -huh. here. Thank, okay, everyone. Thank you, Kelly. Just turn it off. Just turn it off whenever. I'm going to keep going. Jessa, thank you. Jenny, thank you. Duh. Thank you, Veronique. I can't, I'm finding too much humor in this. I'm going to let you <laughs> I feel like okay. Cuba Gooding Jr. in that Oscar. All right, everyone. Like, Have such a guy. No, where's my cane? Go. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Good day.